Hey everybody, um, just wanted to take a few minutes to, to talk about the issue of race. I mean, it was inevitable um, that this topic would come up. It'll probably come up a few times because I am quite passionate about um, the African American experience in terms of American history and also in terms of the African American religious experience here in America. So uh, these things will come up often. The reason it's coming up now is because I was at work the other day and uh, somebody made the comment that, you know, you're not really black. I commented on a Michael Buble song and someone said, you're not really black because you know who that is. As a matter of fact, you know, you're the whitest black man I've ever met. And at the time I wasn't able to push back on what they said, but this is not the first time it's been said of me. Uh, I was actually on a, on a forum the other day because, you know, I run a website and um, people kind of know who I am and know my voice and uh, my voice is disembodied when I'm on my podcast and someone had written on the, in this forum, is it strange that um, I always thought that this guy was white? Uh, there was a video that was posted and so he, he was seeing for the first time that I was not in fact white, that I, was, uh, that I am actually a black guy. And so uh, it, it was really interesting for, for me to, to hear that and continues to be, but I tend to push back on it and, and say to people, here's what you're really saying when you say that. I know you're joking or you think you're joking, but it's betraying what you really think of black people. It's saying, I don't normally hold in my mind a view that black people are educated or well-spoken. This is where you get comments like, hey Calvin, you're so well-spoken, you're a credit to your race. Like, what does that say about what you think about my race to begin with if you say something like that to me? And conversely, um, black people have uh, kind of reverse engineered this. Uh, for so many years we were told what we cannot be. You can't be good, you can't not be a criminal, you can't keep it in your pants and keep from raping and pillaging, uh, you can't get an education, you can't be a president, you can't be a lawyer, all these things we couldn't be. And when slavery ended, you know, that was kind of instituted into the Jim Crow laws and segregation. And so we've had this history of what we cannot be, but now we live in a day and age where black people can by and large be the the makers of their own destiny, the, the masters of their own destiny, so to speak. And so we find ourselves in control of ourselves for the first time in a very, very, very long time, but there's still this mentality of what black people are, what it means to be black, and so there are certain things you can't do. You can't you can't vote Republican if you're if you're black. You can't uh, like education if you're black. You can't desire to be anything other than a hip hopper or a basketball player or an athlete if you're black. These are the things that we aspire to. And anything other than that, to be well spoken, to be educated, means to to have turned on your race or to be a turncoat or to somehow think that you're better. I know that when I've talked to people about having an education or uh, it being important to me to get an education, people have sometimes looked at me with this, you know, this look in their eye, you know, oh wow, you know, oh you think you're better than me, especially in the church. Uh, when you say, you know, I want to go on to Bible school, a lot of people, especially in the African American church, are like, why don't you just let the Holy Spirit guide you? You don't need all that head knowledge, just let the, let the Holy Spirit guide you as if, you know, the Holy Spirit guiding you towards education is a bad thing. Um, but that's not what my piece is about. My piece is really about, um, the idea that white people have this view of me being a credit to my race, at least in my experience, it's not all white people, but a lot of white people in my life feel like, okay, you're different than other black people I know, different than the stereotypical view uh, uh, that's put out in the media and that I also hold myself. Uh, you know, obviously that's where the statements come from. And then there's the other side where black people say to me, you're not black enough. You're not really black because you like these things. Uh, my contention is I can like anything I want. I can date anybody I want. I can like jazz music. I can like hip hop. I can like classical. I can like country. I don't like country, but it's not because I'm black. I don't like country because I don't like that form of music. I'm not from that kind of area. I didn't grow up with that. I'm in the Midwest. I prefer hip-hop. I prefer rock. I prefer 
jazz, I prefer blues, I prefer funk, um, I prefer, you know, electronic because I live in Detroit and that's where we have the Electronic Arts Music Festival every year. So these are the types of things that I like and these are not contradictions to my race. I've not somehow handed in my black card because I don't meet some particular criteria. You know, it's like I, uh, I'm allergic to all forms of melon, which makes me completely useless when you roll out watermelon and black people are supposed to like watermelon. And I know I'm buying into stereotypes here, but it's okay for black people to be, you know, contradictions to cultural expectations. It's okay for you to, to get an education, to, to go to college and, you know, get a degree and get a job and pay your bills. It's okay to like rock music alongside your hip-hop. It's okay to like just rock music and not hip-hop if you're black. It's perfectly okay to be the master of your own destiny. It's okay for me to speak well. When I speak well, I speak as a black man. I am as black as I know how to be. I may not be from the hood, I'm from suburbia. I'm moving into the city of Detroit eventually, but you know, it doesn't change fundamentally who I am, what I like, and what defines who I am. My actions define who I am, okay? I'm not trying to be black, I'm as black as I come. I can't be any blacker for anybody. You know, we look at, you know, Dr. Huxtable. Where would Theo be without Dr. Huxtable? Where would the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air be without, you know, uh, Uncle Phil and, and Carlton? Um, I might be a Carlton. I might be an Uncle Phil. So what? Um, I am who God has created me to be, and by God's grace, I will continue to be that person and continue to help educate other people that it is okay to be who God has created you to be. I am black. I am educated. I am smart. I am not ashamed of any of that, and I am also not saying that I am better than anyone because of it. I am who I am, that's all that I am, I am the master of my own destiny. You should be the master of yours too. Talk to you later.